If you ever wonder how some of the new social media relate to the referral process, you're about to find out. In this chapter, we'll discuss the potential of using LinkedIn for securing introductions. Do you have a LinkedIn profile and have you started using it to create connections and generate referrals? Great. I hope you find the ideas in this short chapter helpful or at least confirming what you're already doing. In the future, we'll devote a full course to this great introduction tool. You probably already know that LinkedIn is simply one big introduction machine. Business people of all types and all over the world are using LinkedIn to meet and start relationships with prospects, vendors, and strategic alliances. Generally speaking, LinkedIn can produce great results with businesses geared towards B2B, business to business sales. It can also work with B2C, business to consumer. I work with thousands of financial professionals, all geared at business to consumer and dealing with people's private financial situations, and even they are able to get connected through LinkedIn. While there are many ways you might use LinkedIn to further your business, I'll confine our discussion here specifically to introductions to prospects. Here are a few tips to help you increase your ability to make LinkedIn pay off for you with more introductions to qualified prospects. Number one, make sure you have as robust and up-to-date LinkedIn profile as possible. One thing we know is that even people who have been recommended or introduced to you by someone they know and trust will look you up on the internet. They'll put your name in their favorite search engine to see if you come up and they'll do a search in LinkedIn to see what they can learn about you before you even contact them. So regardless of your business type or the role you play in your business, your web presence, including LinkedIn, needs to be strong. Also, the more complete your profile, the more likely the search engines will find it and you can come up higher in internet searches. Number two, some people recommend you make the body of your profile more of a story or a narrative, not simply a bunch of bullet points. Personally, I think a combination is best. We want to write for two types of visitors, the ones who will only skim and the ones who are willing to take a few minutes to read a little more about you. Use short sentences and especially short paragraphs to make it friendly to the eye and tell your story. Tell the reader why you're excited about the work you do, why you chose your profession, or why you're excited about it more now than ever before, or why you chose the company for which you currently work. Your why is what makes you different than just about anyone else and makes you more interesting. Number three, LinkedIn offers different levels of membership. You don't necessarily need to sign up for anything beyond the basic level. The level you choose depends on how deep into your client's profiles you want to go. For most, the first level connections are enough. Now these membership levels change fairly regularly, so I'm not going to recommend a specific level for you, but the higher the level, the deeper you can see into someone else's profile, thus helping you gather intelligence on them and see to whom they are connected. Fourth, establish the habit of inviting all your clients and qualified prospects to join you on LinkedIn. And when you invite someone to join you, please don't use the generic invitation language that LinkedIn provides. LinkedIn is about starting and building relationships. Take 20 seconds to customize your invitation to join up with you. Use their first name and acknowledge something about them and or have some fun. Personalize your invitations. Number five, post a value-centered message on your profile at least once per week, but not more than once per day. Make the message educational or inspirational and occasionally fun or personal. Every now and then, you can promote something from your business, like a new service, page on your website, educational event, and so on. But keep this to a minimum. If you become too promotional, people will either break their link with you or just stop paying attention to you. Number six, once a prospect has become a client, have a fresh look at their profile to get a good look at their connections. Are they connected to any individuals or organizations to which you'd like to be introduced? Notice I said once they become a client. In most cases, going through a prospect's profile for the purpose of asking for referrals to people they know will feel like stalking to a prospect. But once they see enough value in the work you do, most will become more open to using LinkedIn for this purpose. And number seven, 
pay attention to people who have viewed your LinkedIn profile over the past day or two. Reach out to them, whether you know them or not. What made them stop by? How can you be a resource for each other? Bring some quick value to this person if you can, even if totally unrelated to your core business. It's not just what you know. It's not just who you know. It's also who knows you. LinkedIn will help you with every aspect of this equation. So let's assume you've brought on a new client and have connected with them on LinkedIn. Here's a short demonstration of what the conversation might sound like. We'll pick this up just after the value discussion. I know I have a happy client. So it appears we have a happy client? It appears you do. George, this is great. I wish we had more clients like you. You truly see our relationship as a partnership. And you know, were it not for Laura suggesting we meet, we wouldn't have done this important work. Guess we both owe her some thanks. I've already thanked her. Me too, several times. You know, with this in mind, I have an important question to ask you. Shoot. I was hoping to get your permission to brainstorm for a few minutes about who you know who might truly value the work I do. I have a few people I've identified for whom I think I can be a great resource. May I run them by you just to see what you think? Well, okay. Who do you have in mind? Well, I've been playing around with LinkedIn a bit lately. I know that you and I are connected. Have you done much with LinkedIn yet? Well, we've been using it for recruiting talent to our company. Have you been snooping into my profile? Guilty, Your Honor. You know, I notice you're connected with Donna Merritt. I've known of Donna for a long time. She's got a great reputation. Would you be willing to help me get my foot in the door with Donna? I suppose I could do that. What did you have in mind? How about you introduce me through LinkedIn? You can send her a message and tell her that taking my call would be worth a few minutes of her time. How's that sound? Once I know you've done that, I'll give her a call. I'd be happy to, Bill. Thank you. At the risk of pushing my luck, I also noticed that you're active in your industry association. Anyone there come to mind who should at least know about the work I do? I suspect you could be a great resource to uh, several of the folks. Tell you what, I'm running short on time. Let's start uh, speaking with Donna and we can pick this conversation up uh, next week. Did you notice how my approach was confident but not pushy? And did you notice how by coming prepared helped the conversation? The combination of confidence, not being pushy, and coming prepared are the three keys to getting people to open up to this conversation.